Introduction of my team background, strategies and algorithms that I implemented, as well as reflections on my learning experience through participating in this competition. I'm Team 100% Gel, and my name is Chloe Ong. I'm from Singapore, and I study at Raffles Girls School. This is my second year of being involved in robotics since I joined the robotics club in secondary school as a co-curricular activity last year. I participated in the National Robotics Competition, World Robotics Olympiad Junior category in 2019, and the RoboCup Asia Pacific Coast Space Rescue ICO Challenge for Steps Under 19 category in June this year. The category I'm participating in this time is the RoboCup Asia Pacific Coast Space Rescue Challenge for Steps Under 19 category. Problems I investigated include differentiating the colors on the map, inefficient movement of the robot, as well as the robot not maximizing the points earned. In order to solve those problems, I implemented a color tree which consisted of conditions using the thresholds of the red, green and blue values of both flight sensors to differentiate the colors. Besides that, I also coded the robot such that it ignores traps, objects and deposits at certain times. For example, the robot was coded to turn away most of the time when one or both of the color sensors sends yellow. However, should it meet any traps when empty, the robot will ignore the traps instead of trying to avoid them in order to save the time required to turn away from the trap. Likewise, if one of the robot's sensors sends orange while the robot is carrying six objects, the robot will turn into the deposit zone accordingly, but the robot will ignore all deposits that it comes across with it storing less than six objects. Lastly, the robot was programmed to follow fixed routes on the map and get two sets of red sign and black objects as well to get the RSCCDB bonus. As a result, the robot was firstly able to differentiate colors on the map and execute the right actions accordingly. In the end, I managed to save much more time as well. The robot can take as short a time as 50 seconds to collect 6 objects and deposit earning around 400 points after collecting RRCCBB bonuses. As compared to taking around 2 minutes to get the same score before I implemented these strategies. My overall scores increased from below 1000 to consistently above 1505 minutes. In conclusion, the problems I investigated could easily be solved through some basic strategies. The challenge mission is to, of course, achieve as many points as possible in 5 minutes. This can be split into collecting objects as quickly as possible, depositing objects as quickly as possible, and avoiding traps and walls. Additionally, one can also earn bonus points if the robot's deposit consists of a set of red, cyan, and black objects, which would give a bonus of 90 points, or if two sets of red, cyan, and black objects are deposited, which would give a bonus of 180 points. The overall mission will be solved if these mini tasks are completed. As for innovative algorithms, I use proportional steering using three range riders as well as targeting certain squares in certain scenarios. Tools and resources I use to help me include the rebel.it website, the cogo.it website, the Sublime app, as well as reference videos from the previous finalists. Rebel.it is a website used to compile and run code online. It is easier to compile code as compared to using a simulator. Thus, I used it to make sure that every part of my code was correct. Another tool I used, cogo.it, is a website used to make mind maps. I used it to make a mind map in order to visualize how I wanted to plan out my code. Other than that, I also used the Sublime app, a text editor for code. This made it easier to visualize my C code as compared to using Notepad. Lastly, I also watched YouTube videos featuring the previous participants sent to us in an email from the organizers which helped me to get a better idea of what a good presentation and code should be like. In order to avoid balls, I used proportional steering using three range finders. I took the difference between the left and right ultrasonic sensor. This was my centering value, which allows the robot to turn when there is more space. Then, I took the value of the ultrasonic sensor that has the lowest value, and this was my raw rotation value. This allows the robot to know how much the robot needed to turn according to the distance from the nearest obstacle or wall. I then put these values into a formula and calculated the angle the robot needs to turn using a weighted average. I used proportional steering when the robot was circling in a target square to find a deposit or objects. This helps the robot to avoid obstacles and at the same time stay in the targeted square. My second algorithm is targeting a certain square by calculating the angle it needs to go in the general direction of that square in order to slowly move towards the target square. This algorithm helps the robot to find squares with certain color objects or deposit squares and also makes the robot save time since it does not have to waste time by blindly sweeping for what it is looking for. Here is a video of my robot running. 
I would like to apologize for being unable to get a speed recording due to technical difficulties. The robot did not perform as what I planned and coded it to at first. It will only turn right even though it will be more efficient and faster to turn left sometimes. This could be due to the mixing up of positive and negative values in my code. Thus, I made use of tools such as Ruffle.it to debug my code. Another method I used to debug my code was using the terminal to print out my code values. As a last resort, if I was unable to fix my problems with the code, I clarified all my doubts with my more experienced seniors and friends. In conclusion, I managed to successfully implement all the algorithms and strategies. Using terminal to print out the values I was getting, made sure that every single one of the values was correct and that the proper cases were being run. This helped me to generally get a better idea of what was going on with the robot. Clarifying all doubts with my teachers and friends helped me to ensure that I was on the right track. This helped me to fully understand what I needed to fix in my code when I was really lost, which helped me to make a very effective yet flexible code. However, there are many areas of improvement for my robot. Firstly, instead of sweeping around each square for two objects, I could make the robot go and roost in order to make use of the squares with randomly generated objects and also ensure that less time is wasted at circling in every square. I could also better tune my wall avoidance such that it does not waste too much time circling at the wall and also turns the shorter way instead of turning right to the angle it wants to achieve. Through participating in the Virtual Archive Co-Space Challenge, I learned that it was important to clarify my doubts as early as possible because it could possibly cause bigger problems later on. The most important thing that I took away from taking part in this competition was that my friends and teachers will always be willing to help me, since I asked all of them for help several times throughout the duration of this competition and they all willingly answered my questions. I am very grateful towards my friends and teachers for their patience and kindness. Using the CoSpace robot, I learned how to code in C and that is very similar to C++. It was much more effective than coding using GUI. I also learned that it was important to make sure that the code was run bit by bit to make sure all of it was correct instead of running in one big chunk and confusing myself in case there were any errors. Lastly, I have learned that programming using a simulator is actually a lot simpler and much smoother as compared to in real life since the building component is taken care of and the only errors that could have happened were caused by the code. Something that I advise other Coastbase participants is to not be afraid to ask for help if you need it since this could result in more problems later. Also, you need to understand what you're coding so that you can better figure out how to debug your code. Besides that, remember to think creatively in order to be able to come up with good strategies. Finally, in seeking guidance, you can always visit Stack Overflow and look at past finalist videos or look for your friends and teachers to clarify your doubts. I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you.